Hello everyone, this is Ivan Belostenko for Ichpot Prond, Go Against the Tide TV from uh, Lublin, Poland here. Uh, today is Friday, the 3rd of January, and with us we have our uh, good uh, brother in Christ and dear friend, uh, Pastor Saeed Abedini from Said Ministries. Uh, hello, Pastor Said. Can you hear us okay? Hello, thank you for having me here. For, for coming up on uh, such a short notice. So today uh, we discovered that the head of the Al Quds uh, Force, the Al Quds Brigades, um, Qasem Soleimani, General Qasem Soleimani, have been uh, assassinated by the U.S. Uh, forces uh, um, through a drone strike. Um, you found out about this as well. Uh, can you tell us what's what's your comment and uh, what do you hear from the Iranian people about uh, this elimination? Is it a good step, bad step? That's a wonderful news. I, I just heard this morning that uh, so many people, I, I was watching uh, looking at my Facebook and I saw so many people start, you know, showing their joy and they were rejoiced and, uh, you know, they they just showed their support from the Donald Trump decision about uh, what happened to Qasem Soleimani today. And uh, I'm so happy because this is the continue of my message in Paris when I spoke about God justice and I, I was preaching the gospel in a stadium with 130,000 people. And God put in this verse in my heart that God is gonna is gonna justice bring the justice against any evil. So today we can see that uh, uh, the justice happened, and uh, one of the the main terrorists has been dead. And uh, don't forget, Asim Soleimani is the head of the octopus that was doing all the terrorism activities in the region in Middle East for so many years, and even the Hamas called him the senior supporter of uh, Pal Palestinian resistance. So he was everywhere. He was in Syria, Iraq, in Iran. So he was the, he was the main face of the uh, terrorism in the Middle East. And uh, now this uh, person is gone. And that's going to bring so many division among the leadership of Sepah, I believe, because they lost one of their most important person, the strategic person. So it's going to bring them to probably make some uh, bad decision in future and uh, probably they're going to get involved more to do a revenge and to attack more uh, things that like it may be probably to Israel to show that uh, they never stop fighting for their Islam. But uh, this is a good news because we see after so many years, especially after uh, President Obama, we see that the U.S. government made the first step practically and not just keep just talking to people, just talking and talking. This is a good walk to start, but this is a first step. So uh, maybe Iran government uh, keep continue to uh, show the leverage and they want to attack back and uh, targeting probably Israel and uh, other American in the region and uh, maybe other U.S. embassies. I hope that uh, that uh, strong message can be a uh, very clear and crystal to a supreme leader of Iran that he needs to step back and he needs to see all the uh, voices and bloodshed that he made. You know, last this month he killed more than 100, 500,000, uh, oh, sorry, uh, 1,500 uh, people. And uh, he made uh, 1,000, 1,000 people in Jordan, arrested so many people. So this is a good time that he can see. This time the message is very clear, very strong, and the consequences can come to his home. Uh, on uh, um, uh, Galgalatz uh, today in Israel, saying that uh, there was uh, Ram, Ram Ben Bar Barak uh, said that all the terrorist um, activities uh, were, uh, he was involved actively in all the terrorist activities. So it wasn't just like a passive or just, a, just a, um, somebody who was behind the scenes, he was actively involved in all these um, terrorist uh, attacks. Um, can you tell us, uh, Pastor Said, uh, about the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards, because uh, this brigade is, is part of them? And what, are they bad? What did they do during the, the revolution? How did they come to be? And who, who are they in general? Can you give us a brief on them? Are you talking about the last 40 years? Yeah, after the revolution. 
Yeah, this morning when I heard the news, I was wishing, like uh, dreaming, what about if when uh, Iranian protesters 40 years ago, they attack Iran embassy and they would receive the same response. So we wouldn't see so many bloodshed, million people killed and so many war is going to happen. So I'm, I'm very thankful that God gave Donald Trump this uh, special moment of the world. And uh, yeah, those people, you know, Soleimani is the face of those revolutionary guard that they started what they did in 40 years ago by attacking U.S. embassy in Iran, in Tehran. And now they want to, uh, to just uh, do the same pattern in another country, which they did last uh, 10 years, especially they started under uh, Obama administration. And uh, so they just, uh, they want to do the same in Iraq, but I was... I was, uh, uh, you know, so happy to see this this time. Uh, U.S. government responded so wisely, so strong, and they cannot continue what they did last 40 years. But space of Qasem Soleimani is exactly what the Revolutionary Guard and all those radical Muslim in Iran they want. They want to destroy Israel. They want to take the leadership of Middle East, and they want to make the whole world Muslim and make them like themselves. And they can do whatever they can do. They use all the money until the last dollar that they have in their hand. And, uh, you know, they're going to do so many bloodshed until they can be successful because this is what they believe is from Allah and their God. So uh, their message is very clear. Still this morning at the uh, Namaz prayer in Friday in Tehran, uh, their, their leader started attacking on, in America and Israel. And he said, we're going to rage, we're going to do the worst and this is the end of the, uh, he threats so many Americans in the region to, and threat to kill them. So they, they don't stop what they started. So we need to respond so back as, we, as it happened this morning and uh, to end this darkness of last 40 years in Iran and now in the Middle East. Well, what would you say to people who would say that this assassination is going to provoke more violence? Would, would it not be better to uh, not do the assassination, assassination? Do you think it's going to uh, you know, provoke more violence response from, from the Iranian regime? Uh, I, I, it, you know, the, the, supreme Iran, uh, the supreme leader of Iran, Khamenei, has just two choices. One is to uh, attack back and the other is just to withdraw all the, you know, soldiers he has in the region back home and, you know, just keep continue the dictatorship in Iran. I think he is, he was ready for this situation because I remember uh, a couple months ago he came and in one of his speech, he called Qasem Soleimani murder of Islam. So they knew that he's going to be killed probably and they were ready for this situation. So that's the whole scenario. It's not going to be so simple that we killed the, the face or the head of the octopus and everything is going to be over. No, I think they were ready for this situation and they're going to respond uh, harder and harsher. But uh, in the other hand, I'm so thankful and because we have Donald Trump and Donald Trump is man of his word, what I saw last year. And as you know, that in one of my five prophecies for him is the King Cyrus of modern day. And I... I believe he's going to finish the job he started, and uh, we don't see uh, we don't see uh, the situation gets out of control. So I I believe that uh, this is a good start. We need to keep continue, we, and we need to finish the job. So if we don't finish the job, yeah, it's going to get worse. But I think United States has the power, has uh, the right to do that because those people killed so many Americans. They even killed their own citizen. You know, just last month. 1,500 people has been shot to their head and heart without any warning in the street. So this bloodshed is, uh, we never can forget what they did. So I believe uh, this is a good start and we need to finish the job. And uh, last question, uh, some people, um, some Christians, especially pacifist Christians in predominantly in Europe, for some reason it's not the same in the US, and they would say that how can we be, how can we Christians uh, be happy about somebody's death? Shouldn't, is it not anti-Christian to be glad that somebody killed, whether he is good or bad? What would you answer to that? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Before these things happen, we need to pray. 
I prayed for all the leaders of Iran. I prayed for Khamenei. I prayed for Qasem Soleimani. You know, last when I was in prison, when I was under, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, when they took me to prison, I was praying for all of them for years. So, first of all, we need to pray. Second, God is God of justice. He's going to bring justice on evils. This is the character of God, and it's never going to change. Third. We as a Christian, we're never going to rejoice on people's death, but we rejoice over God's justice. This is different. You know, I'm sad that those people like Soleimani or Khamenei or President of Iran Rouhani or other radical Muslims, they choose the road of darkness and destruction. We always send message of the good news. We preach the gospel to them. So I myself, my life has been a good testimony for all of them. I know that they know the message of God. Uh, they know the message of Bible, but they chose the darkness. They chose the road of destruction. And the character of God, the justice of God, the love of God, the harsh love of God is to defend victims. So sometimes they give them a little bit of time to do whatever they want to do, to do evil things, but their time is going to come. And they're, uh, you know, like, like today we're going to see they're going to die and the punishment comes on them. So this is a good, and that's actually part of the gospel because love of God includes the safe love and the hard love. So we can see the hard love that God gave us time to repent. And if we don't repent, his justice comes. And part of his justice is going to be the death, which is the, is the, is the uh, result of sin. So these people actually, they chose it. They chose it themselves. We prayed for them. We talk to them, we preach the gospel to them, we gave them time, but they don't, they are just, you know, sons of evil. So, but we don't rejoice over the death of anyone, but we rejoice over the uh, justice of God and that we, we can see God is in control of everything. So when these people were killing thousands, thousands of people, I know God heard the, the cry and the cry out of their parents, their children, you know, they killed so many people. So God of love does the justice and he ends the, the, the evil process that they started. So this is my message for the world. You know, that was what I spoke uh, at Paris 2016, uh, which most of them, they were Muslim. And I said, God is going to punish the evil. And uh, this is, this is the, what we see. He still does it in history. And uh, for sure, God even said in Bible, you're never going to be happy over uh, when uh, evil perishes. But he gave time. He, you know, sent prophets. He gave us Bible. But some people, they choose to be perished. So there is no other choice. We, we, uh, it gets, breaks our heart to see evil. They get their punishment. But in the same time, at the side of the coin, we can rejoice because God is God of love and justice. Amen to that. Pastor Said Badini, thank you very much for joining us and for your comments. Uh, we're looking forward to see you again here on this TV. Thank you so much, and I encourage everyone to keep praying that every nothing goes out of the God's control, and everything can come to the end in the best position, in the best situation it can be by God's grace. Thank you for having me, and God bless you all. God bless.